I don't know if you guys have heard about flesh gates. They're very similar to skinwalkers, but without the Native American connotations. That's why any skinwalker stories you hear from outside the US are more likely these things. Though, of course, they lurk around here too. They mimic voices in the same way as skinwalkers, and are often found in wooded areas. But more often than not, they appear as other humans rather than animals. It takes them time to study human behaviours, and they struggle to talk in long sentences, usually relying on a few words to lure their victims away from their group. As such, there are some telltale signs that you've encountered a flesh gate. A number of years ago now, a couple of friends and I were on a camping trip out in the woods. It was my best friend Connor, our pal Julian, and myself, all alone in the great Montana wilderness. Night falls, and we're getting ready for bed. We start hearing the sound of movement from outside our tent, like rustling in the bushes and beyond the trees around us. We quieten down and focus on the noises. It doesn't sound like an animal though, it sounds like a person walking around out there. We even hear these distinct Hmm, sounds. Like people make when they're contemplating something. Definitely not a sound any animal makes. This goes on for a little while, and the longer we sit there doing nothing, the more exposed we feel. If some weirdo's out there circling us for whatever reason, the last thing we want to do is ignore them. So Connor and I decide to go investigate. We grab a couple of flashlights and an outdoorsman knife each, and Julian stayed behind to guard the tent. The two of us venture into the surrounding thicket. Finding nothing, we walk a bit further away from the campsite, keeping an ear out for any further movement. That's the thing. The woods were dead silent, to an unnatural degree. The whole atmosphere was kind of off. It's difficult to put into words, but Connor and I were satisfied that the coast was clear, so, after what must have been five minutes of looking around, we head back to the tent. We return to find Julian not inside the tent, but rather standing outside nearby it, staring off in the opposite direction we're approaching from. When I call out to him, he screams and almost darts off into the woods, telling us to stay back. We manage to calm him down and try and figure out what the hell's going on. Julian tells us that there was indeed a man out there in the woods. It was me, or at least he thought it was. Whoever was there looked identical to me in every way. He tells us that after Connor and I went off, he heard me calling him outside. Thinking I'd found something, he got out of the tent and saw me standing in the tree line, beckoning him over. Apparently, the figure just kept repeating the phrase, Hey, come here, look at this. Even in response to simple questions, the figure would just repeat the same phrase, like it was the only sentence it knew. How Connor and I didn't hear the same thing when the woods were that silent, I don't know. Even in the dark, it was obvious to Julian that my eyes were glazed over, like I wasn't really there only my shell. When he flashed his light on my face, he says I didn't react like a normal person would when having a bright light shined in their eyes. I just seemed inhuman to him, and the way I talked was almost robotic, like the words coming out of my mouth were a voice recording. The thing was looking around erratically too. Its head didn't move fluidly, but like a bird's does when it's keeping an eye out for predators or prey. That's when I really called out to him from behind, and the mimic ran off deep into the woods. Naturally, it fucked him up a little to see me in one place and then the other. From my understanding, the doppelganger was almost certainly a flesh gate, and Julian luckily didn't fall for it. More than likely, this was an inexperienced flesh gate that had yet to learn the finer details of human behaviour. Had Julian fallen for it, then it's likely that would have been the last anyone would have seen of him. 
most people brush flesh gates off as legends, but we know the truth. I was on a 41-foot sailboat in the middle of Chesapeake Bay with about seven other men doing a shakedown test cruise. We planned to be out there for about 12 hours. It was the mid-1980s, not as reliable weather prediction resources. We get caught in a tropical storm, winds gusting into the 50 miles an hour range. We had just barely rigged storm hawsers and storm sails because the one fellow on board who was the best sailor sensed that the storm was almost on us, otherwise we would have died. During the storm itself, I expected to die at any time. In fact, we made a security security call on the radio. If you've spent time at sea, you'll know what I'm talking about. For what seemed like 15 minutes, we were in a maelstrom. No visibility. But then, thankfully, it passed, and we would live. This was at about 3pm, and although there was cloud cover of course, the ambient light was such that you could see for two miles in any given direction. If you're familiar with the sea, you know that such storms, particularly in shallower depths near land masses, dredge up a lot of things from the sea floor. We're all on deck, working lines and checking damage, and the bay around us is choppy and churning and foaming. Old-timey sailors often use the saying, the sea is confused. I look about 15 feet off the starboard side, and something swims to the surface, breaks the surface, looks at us, and then submerges again. It was like a thin man, with humanoid shape, arms articulated like a man, a human head, but its skin was covered in scales like a snake. It looked at us, blinked its weird, heavy lidded eyes, and then dove back under. So, maybe you need to know a few things about me at that moment. No drugs, no alcohol, no injuries. I was elated because I was glad to be alive, but my senses in that situation were sharpened, not dulled. I had, at the time, about six years experience on ships and fishing boats, and had seen squid, octopi, flying fish, sharks, skates, everything, all around the world. I wasn't the type of guy to see a patch of seaweed and call it a sea monster. I made an instant decision that I wasn't going to say anything. What could I say? I just saw a strange creature take my word for it. The men on this boat were all mechanics and engineers and professionals. Why get a reputation as a flake? At the time, it was important for each of us to get D-skipper or OOD qualifications and saying something like that would be frowned upon. And as I stood there in my life vest, soaking wet, hooked onto the steel lifeline, glad just to be alive, one of the other sailors, a USN captain with over 30 years experience in the surface navy, piped up and said, I just saw a brown thing pop up on the surface. It looked like a lizard man with a scaly face. It blinked at us with these big eyes, and then went back under. Yeah, I saw it too, I said. No one else said that they had seen it. We sailed back to the pier later that day, and didn't speak of it again. I was up pretty late last night, watching Naruto with my younger sister and father and it was around 2.30 in the morning. I only noticed the time because my dad had said something along the lines of, it's almost 2.30, you guys need to get some sleep. My sister Sophia and I went upstairs and got into bed. We're currently sharing a room, since she took my old room and my queen bed when I went to college. We're really close, so I don't mind it. We're sitting in bed. Her on the side closest to the door and farthest from the window, and me directly parallel to the window. As usual, she turns off the light and rolls over to go to sleep, and I lay on my stomach next to her on my cell phone. 
Right now, the internet wasn't working, so I'm playing Solitaire and a few other apps. The second the internet gets working again, I pull up YouTube and put on a Sherlock Holmes audiobook. I've heard this audiobook a thousand times, at least the beginning, since I tend to fall asleep about 30 minutes in, so I don't really listen to the words. Normally, I can just turn over and fall asleep, but for some reason, I didn't feel right. It was like something was watching me, and I was afraid to turn away from my phone screen. I'm a fairly paranoid person, though I'm not scared easily. All of a sudden, there's a tapping on our window. We have squirrels living in our roof, so I just ignore it like usual, but a part of me is afraid to look at the window. The way our window works is that it's positioned right over the garage, and I used to frequently climb out onto the roof to smoke with friends. The tapping starts again, and Sophia turns over half asleep and says, Could you quit that? I'm not doing anything, I replied. As soon as I said that, the tapping stopped. At this point, I'm significantly freaked out, but I figure I've just been up late and I'm imagining things. And, like the stupid person I am, something in me told me to get up and close the blinds to our window. As I look in that direction, I see the most terrifying thing I've ever seen in my life. It was a person, but not a person. I don't know how to describe it. It definitely looked human, but something was just wrong, like the lines were all blurry and the skin so grey. It had a really sharp nose, and these dog-like teeth and matted dark hair. I must have gasped or something, because Sophia bolted up and looked my way, and as soon as she looked out the window, she said, Oh my god. It shifted to the side and let out a cry. The best way to describe it is like the Wicked Witch of the West's laugh, it wasn't like a full-on laugh, just the first ha, but really extended. I backed up slowly, and as soon as I moved, it was gone. No running away or anything, just gone. I wouldn't have believed it if my sister hadn't seen it too. She somehow was able to go back to sleep after that, but I don't think I slept longer than an hour. We just didn't talk about it after that. I think out of shock. All I know is that I never want to have an experience like that again. This happened to me in mid-August 2015. I live with my girlfriend in a two-story townhouse in Woodbridge, Virginia, with a set of noisy stairs. On this afternoon... I had the most bizarre experience I've ever had. I was downstairs making a late breakfast for myself and my girlfriend, who slept in that day. It was maybe a little past 1pm, and I had just finished cooking eggs and oatmeal. As I plated the food, I saw out of the corner of my eye my girlfriend enter the kitchen. She stared and said nothing, and I asked her if she was hungry, and she nodded. We sat and ate, and I talked to her about how the car was making a funny noise, and about what a lazy day it was, but she just stayed quiet, listening and eating. When we finished, we both walked into the kitchen and placed our dishes in the sink, and I went ahead of her and walked out of the kitchen, into the living room between where the kitchen and the stairs that lead up are. I stopped for a second, knowing her eyes were on me from behind. And I had a bone-chilling moment when I heard my girlfriend's voice call from the top of the stairs, asking about her breakfast. I turned around in a flash and saw no one there. The hairs on my neck stood up. I walked around the whole downstairs area a few times to confirm. I went upstairs with a noticeable look of shock and looked at my girlfriend suspiciously. She had genuinely asked where her food was, and I had trouble explaining to her what I just saw. 
She swears that she hadn't been downstairs at all that day, and doesn't remember us talking about the car or anything. What was so freaky about it was that we both knew how noisy our stairs were. The sounds of weight on wood are very evident in our home, and I was standing between her, or it, and the stairs. I'm only 29 years old, so I don't believe it was a senior moment, but it was truly terrifying. Seeing your own double is one thing. Seeing, hearing, feeding, and conversing with something you think is a loved one is a completely different and sobering experience. I'm not exactly sure what it was, but I saw something strange in the woods outside of Homer, Nebraska. There's an old graveyard out here that's infamous for having a witch buried there, and it's kind of a local spot for kids to go and scare themselves. Most of the land out there is flat, and is used for farming, but this graveyard sits on the edge of a big hill, and is surrounded by thick woods. One night, at around midnight, me and five of my friends decide to go out there in the woods, and find that witch's grave, because the one in the actual graveyard is fake, and supposedly the real one is out in the forest. So we begin our adventure trekking through the dark forest, it doesn't take us long to find the real grave, as a couple of people I was with have been there before. We stick around for a couple of minutes, just fucking around and trying to scare each other, when we all just get this instinctual feeling of dread. I know a lot of stories talk about this, but it's a very real feeling, like your body responding to danger before you can even realize what's going on. It's probably worth mentioning that as a kid, I lived in a supposedly haunted house, and I'd never felt this feeling before. We decided to get the fuck away from the grave. Now, this is where us, being stupid teenagers, almost got ourselves killed. One of the kids I was with says that some people grow pot around this area, and that he knows where to find some. So, even though we all clearly felt something was wrong, we decided, fuck it, let's get high. As we started walking back through the woods, I began to feel like we were being watched, and every now and then, I'd hear the rustling of leaves or the crackling of undergrowth behind me. I told my friends we needed to move faster, but they were all just saying I was trying to fuck with them. Eventually, as we keep walking, we stumble upon a clearing, and we can't really see anything ahead of us. When all of a sudden, my friend starts taking off for the other end of the clearing, and we all go after him. All around us, we can hear cattle freaking the hell out. After we get a couple of hundred yards away from the cows, something scares them way worse than us. I mean, I've never heard a sound like that coming from an animal. It was a horrible mix of the cows being scared to death by something, and an unearthly, ear-shattering scream. Now, by this time, I realized that we were lost in the middle of the woods at 2am, with something stalking us. I finally convinced everyone that we should change our direction so that we can get to the road, and about 30 minutes later, we're making progress, as someone spots some headlights way out in front of us that we can see on top of the hill we're on. We start walking down towards the road, when I notice that those sounds from behind us earlier had started up again. I turn to my friend and tell him to point his iPhone flashlight back behind us. I only saw something for a moment, but about 30 yards behind us, I saw a blackish brown figure with yellow eyes lean its head from behind a tree and then quickly duck back behind it. This is what really freaked me out, as animals around here don't sneak around and duck behind trees. I get the best look out of all of my friends, and the head looked kind of like a gaunt German shepherd, with a little resemblance to a human face. The eyes and mouth looked far more human than dog. There aren't any wolves or bears around here, 
As far as I know, there are no large predators here at all. It was a little bit elevated, but it was still eye level with me. I'm 6'2", and this thing was at least 6 foot, so I'm pretty sure it was standing on two legs. At this point, I take the fuck off. I swear I've never ran that fast in my life. We make it to the road in under five minutes, but realize we came out the other side of the woods and have to walk back three miles down the road to our cars. It was honestly the scariest night of my life. Whatever it was, wasn't human or animal. I've been back there multiple times, but never at night now. If anyone's interested, I've left a link to the place on Google Maps in the description below. Hey guys, Lazy here, and thank you very much for listening. Hopefully this video introduced you to some new creatures, because I hadn't heard of flesh gates before this, but they seem pretty spoopy, so, um, spoopy, spoopy. So, uh, hopefully you enjoyed that one and all the other stories too. I'm planning on making another video soon that isn't as paranormal based, so, uh, stick around for that. And if you like this video, then pound that like button, giggity, and, um, I'll have another video for you guys very, very soon. Until then, stay spooky, and remember, the best things happen in the dark.